Hi, I'm Fabrizio Montesi from the Chore development team and I'll be giving this video tutorial about the Chore programming language. Chore is a new programming language for concurrent communicating systems. It is based on the concept of choreographies, which allow you to write system implementations from a global viewpoint. Chore has been mathematically formalized and is supported by an Eclipse-based IDE. It has also been developed following discussions both in the academia and the industry and is open source, so you can download its source code from our website. Chor is still a prototype, but it is rapidly evolving. So why Chor? Why a new programming language? Here are some interesting problems that Chor can help you with. The first one is protocols. Multi-party protocols are usually specified informally. Chor, instead, allows you to write protocol specifications and then check your programs for compliance with them. The second problem is deadlocks. When you write a concurrent system, it is easy to introduce deadlocks in it, but then it can be very hard to detect them and remove them consequently. Instead, in Chore, programs are statically checked to be deadlock-free every time. Then we have productivity. Prototyping complex distributed systems can be a long process because you have to write the code for each entity in the system manually and separately. Chore instead defines the behavior of all entities in a single program and then generates the code for these entities automatically for you. Lastly, we have clarity. Understanding how entities in a system will interact during execution can be hard because you have to look at their input-output actions and match them manually. Instead, chore programs make this matching explicit, allowing for better clarity. The development methodology of the chore language is represented here. A chore program is made of protocol specifications and the choreography which implements the protocols. We have an example of a protocol here on the right, and you can read this line as uh, A sends a message to B through operation hi, and the content of this message is a string. A and B are called roles and are just abstract identifiers for the roles that you will have in your protocol. Here on the bottom, we have an implementation, and that's called a choreography. In a choreography, threads, in this case T1 and T2, are responsible for implementing a protocol. In this example, we are using S as an identifier for the instance of the protocol that we are implementing. These instances are called sessions, like in web programming. You can read this line as thread1 T1 sends the string hello to thread T2 that receives the string in variable x through operation high. When you write a program like this, Chore allows you to automatically generate an executable implementation of your choreography. These implementations are currently projected to the Jolie language but we plan to support Java language and .NET languages in the future, and many others. Chor is designed to be language independent, so its architecture can be always expanded to support new endpoint languages. Let us see now how we can actually use our IDE to write Chor programs. This is the Chor IDE, based on Eclipse, where we can create a new project. Here we choose Tutorial as a project name. And then we can create new files with chore programs that must be defined using the .chore extension. The first thing that we need to do when writing a chore program is to give it a name using the program keyword. Here we choose tutorial again. Then you can immediately start writing protocol definitions using the protocol keyword. You have to give each protocol a name, simple here. And for the sake of this example, we are going to reuse the code that we had in our slides. So 
a role A sends a message to a role B through operation high and the content of the message is a string. Next, we want to write an implementation. Protocols are implemented by writing sessions and sessions are created through public URLs called public channels. This is similar to web application programming. So we can create a public channel using the public keyword, give it a name, my public channel here, and then we can declare the protocol type that this public channel will follow in the sessions that are created through it. We can also use autocompletion from the chore IDE. Now we have to write our choreography. In order to do so, we have to use the main keyword which acts as the entry point of our program and then we can start writing the behavior of the threads that will be executed in our system. In this example, we will use two threads, T1, which will play role A in our protocol, and T1 will be a thread that is already running when the system is executed. The first action that T1 would do would be to start another thread, T2, which will play role B in our protocol. And these two threads will cooperate for the creation of a new session through my public channel and the name for this session will be S. So far so good. Now the chore IDE is complaining because we have created a new session between these two threads through my public channel, but my public channel must implement the protocol simple and we are not implementing the protocol here. So we would get this message here, session S ends before completing its type. In order to implement this type, we can simply write the communication that we want. That would be T1 sending a message hello to T2, which receives it on variable X. And this happens through operation high and session S. Now that we have written this behavior, Chor doesn't complain anymore because we have successfully implemented our session and respected protocol simple. Now we can also add some local extra code, for instance to T2, in order to show the message that we have received from T1. In order to do this, we can use the show primitive. And here we have to say which thread will show the message, simply by using our variable x. So you can read this as thread T2 will show the content of variable x. When you have finished writing your choreography, you can use this button up here called the Jolie Endpoint Projection in order to automatically generate some Jolie programs that will implement your choreography. So in this case, we press the button and then we get a notification from Chor that the projection has been completed successfully. This means that now we can navigate to the project directory tutorial and see a new subdirectory called EPP for endpoint projection that contains uh, our generated code. In this case, we have three Jolie programs. One for implementing the behavior of thread T1. Another one that supports the spawning of new sessions uh, through the channel My Public Channel as specified in our choreography. And finally, a third one that supports the dynamic creation of new threads uh, through my public channel playing role B in our protocol. So this service here will support the creation of our thread T2. We can now launch the, the three programs. We start with my public channel and then with my public channel B. And finally, we launch the behavior for thread T1. As expected, we get a message from thread T2 saying hello, this message has, be has been received by thread T1. Of course, 
we may, we may want to add something more descriptive here for instance we can use expressions and say that it is t2 that has received this message here and we can generate the code again and launch the programs again here we get the confirmation that it is indeed thread t2 that is printing the message on screen another small extension that we can make in our example would be to make this string hello dynamic in order to do this we can use the ask primitive at thread t1 and for instance we can ask the, the user to give us a message like this and store this message in variable y at thread t1 and then instead of sending the static string hello we can simply send the content of variable y to t2 so let's see what happens after we generate the code for this example we launch the services again oops here I launched the wrong service there we go and then we launch the behavior of thread t1 again so t1 is expected is asking us for a message and here we write hi the message is sent to t2 which displays it on screen now that we are a bit familiar with the procedure that we can follow using char let's make a more interesting example so let's clear our shells go to our to our IDE again and make a new program we're going to call this program authentication give it a name Now the protocol that we are going to implement is inspired by the OpenID specifications. OpenID is a protocol for the distributed authentication of a user. So we have a user here that wants to authenticate in order to access the service of a reline party. But the reline party cannot authenticate the user because it does not own the database for checking the user credentials. So in order to authenticate the user credentials, we are going to exploit an external service called the identity provider. And the protocol goes like this. First, the user contacts the reline party to request access. The reline party then asks the identity provider to perform the authentication of the user. The user can then send the password to the identity provider, which finally will inform the reline party on whether the authentication was successful or not. So, how to implement this protocol? First we have to write the protocol specification, which we will call authentication protocol. In this protocol we will have roles U, RP and IP. U for user, RP for reline party and IP for identity provider. By the way, you can find this example in the chore repository under the example directory. So the protocol will start with the user sending a message to RP with its username. So we will declare our username to RP. Then RP will ask IP to authenticate this username. So we will forward the username to from I RP to IP. The user will then send its password to the identity provider. So as you can see from the protocol, the reline party never sees the password from the user. This is an important thing, an important aspect uh, for security, for instance. Finally, IP will notify the reline party on the result of the authentication. And here we introduce a new concept. IP will make a choice. So IP will be able to choose between saying OK to the reline party or fail.
now we have to declare a public channel we will declare the public auth channel for creating our sessions here we use auth completion again another cool feature that you can use when developing with chore programs is basic refactoring capabilities this is given by eclipse uh, so you can rename a protocol reference and have the the name of the protocol renamed at the same time <coughs> now let's let's write the choreography we're going to have the user starting it all so the user will start a session with our p and ip using a public authentication channel and we'll call this session auth session now we will st we will ask the user for everything so first we ask the user for the the username and uh, also for our password then you will send the username to rp and uh, rp will forward this username to ip then we can uh, send our password to IP now IP has to make the decision on the user authentication so let's ask again on IP side we ask whether to accept and we show our username and password combination and we receive uh, the uh, the result on variable result now we can use the conditional construct for checking whether result is a yes and we perform this choice at thread ip if we are successful then we will notify rp through operation ok still on session or session otherwise we will notify um, through operation fail again now we can project our program or even better before doing that let's put a uh, debugging message at RP so here we will say authentication successful and here instead we will say failure so now we can project our code and go to our implementation directory here we will find more programs this time because we have more entities participating in the system we launch all the services we leave our active thread as the last service that we want to launch thread for the user so we execute the system and the user thread asks us for a username say John and the password we say my password then IP asks us about the authentication and we can say yes and finally RP notifies us of the successful authentication attempt of course we can run the choreography again and again 
with different username, different username, another password, and say no instead of yes, and we get the failure message from our P. Now, this protocol is a bit more complicated than our first example. So we, we added some messages here and uh, programmers may introduce mistakes when implementing these protocols. For instance, we may forget to send our password to the identity provider. In these cases, then Chorv would statically verify with on-the-fly verification that we are making some mistakes. For instance, here we can see that uh, we are not we um, we are not supposed to use operation OK uh, at this time of the protocol, and uh, that the protocol for auth session expects an output from role U for the username, while thread IP has role IP. That's because we are using this communication here for implementing this step here of the protocol, which is obviously wrong. So if we uncomment again our line, then the type checker wouldn't complain anymore again. The short language has many other features. You can find other examples in our source code repository. Here we have some. For instance, you can write streaming protocols this is an example where we have a protocol in which a streamer sends a packet to a client and then we can decide either to do it again and then we recur so we can run this protocol indefinitely or to end at any time. You can implement recursive protocols uh, such as this using procedures. So procedures take uh, thread names and sessions as parameters and you can self-call a procedure or have a core recursion if you want. We also have other examples about authentication for showcasing how to mix multiple protocols in a choreography or run a same protocol many times in a choreography with potentially different implementations. In this protocol we even uh, use session references as message content so you can have uh, uh, sessions sent uh, to other threads uh, that didn't know about that session until that moment. We call this mechanism session delegation. It's useful for instance for uh, security purposes. Uh, you can find other examples about security here. We have uh, OpenID with users that have high or low uh, access profiles uh, to some data. You can also find other examples in the technical report on the foundations of the Chor language that you can find in our website. It is also worth noting that since our projection currently supports the Jolie language, you can use all the capabilities uh, offered by it for integrating with different deployment setups uh, like HTTP sockets or Bluetooth networks. Through Jolie, we can support already different domains like multiple applications and distributed service-oriented architectures. Nevertheless, Chor is language independent, so we plan to extend support to new languages in the future. To conclude, you can find more information about the Chor language on our website, or you can contact us directly through our mailing list. Thank you for watching this video.